Hi, I'm Adam Wyatt, and today I'll be talking about the foul and a miss. The foul and a miss rule is one of the most misunderstood in the game of snooker, and a lot of the confusion comes from trying to apply the rule at the amateur level. I won't go into the full details of the rule itself in this session, that's for another time. What I want to talk about now is how to apply the rule in our local competitions, whether it be in WA or other organisations in Australia and around the world. Let's start with why we need the foul and a miss rule. Back in the 1980s, some of the professional players realised that sometimes it was better to not even try to get out of a snooker, rather than hitting the ball on and leaving a pot available. The rule was brought in to say that you have to try to hit the ball on. If you say in your local league that you don't play the foul and miss rule, you're essentially saying that you don't have to try to get out of a snooker. You can virtually just play a push out like in nine ball. I don't think anyone intends for that to be the case. What you mean is that you have to make a genuine attempt to get out of a snooker. You know what? That's exactly what the rule says. The application of the rule has evolved over the years, and you could even now say that a player should not be allowed to gain an advantage from having committed a foul. Even though you may be trying to hit the ball, if you are also playing it with safety in mind, then you are leaving yourself open to be called for a miss. The difficulty in the rule comes at the definition that says the player must endeavour to the best of their ability to hit the ball on. The key thing here is to determine the best of your ability. But how would a referee know when seeing a player for the first time? The answer is that the expected level is set by the tournament you are playing in and is applied equally to all players in that event. If I was to enter the Q school and qualifiers for the main tour, they're not going to say, well, this guy's pretty hopeless, so we'll go easy on him. If you enter an event, you are making a statement that you are good enough to play at that level. By the same token, when you are just playing in a social league, you shouldn't expect the same standard as they have at the Crucible. The bar should be set at an appropriate standard for the tournament you are playing. Where the professional game has virtually every failure to hit a ball called a miss, as we come down through the national championships and ranking events, there is a step down. In WA, our state championship is the pinnacle, essentially the same as a national ranking event. But a state ranking event should be considered as a level below and steps down again with events like the state minor snooker and junior events or the Monday Night League. This is a very important point to make. If you are playing in an amateur competition, you should not be treating it as if you are at the crucible. So many times players have said that because another player put them back X amount of times, they will do it to the next player when they have the opportunity. This is a terrible way to play and is totally against the sportsmanship that we want the game to be played. Have a realistic view of the level of the event you are playing in and apply a common sense standard that would be expected for that level. So let's look at some examples of when a miss should or shouldn't be called. Remember that the rule says the player must endeavour to hit the ball on. It says nothing about trying to hit the ball and leave it safe. You will see the pros trying to come off two cushions to flick the edge of a ball and get back into balk. That's great if you can do it, but if you miss the ball even by a millimetre, you can't say that you've made your best effort to hit the ball. Imagine if someone offered you a million dollars to get out of a snooker. Would you play for the edge? Another example is where an easier option is available, but you choose the path to leave the ball safe. A classic example of this happened in the Australian Open snooker. The easiest path to hit a red would surely have left the ball on, so the player gave away 63 points in fouls by taking the harder option. It's not a hard and fast rule that a miss will always be called if you take a harder option, but you can say that you are judged by the same standard. You are making the statement that you can hit this ball off two cushions just as easily as off one. If you could definitely hit it off one, then you'll need to hit it off two.
Some rules of thumb can be used. If a player falls short of the distance, you can almost always say that it must be a miss. Have they hit the ball as hard as their ability allows? Probably not. They're usually trying to roll up to a ball and leave it safe. So you can say that falling short of the distance is pretty much always a miss. It doesn't matter if they are trying to roll up to the pack off one cushion or a four cushion escape to a single ball. You could say that if a one cushion escape is available with no impediments, you can expect the player to hit the ball on. Most of the time this will work. There are exceptions which we will talk about later, but in general, when we are talking about a state ranking tournament standard, it is a fair call. Some people say that if you attempt a swerve shot and fail to make contact, it is automatically a miss. This does not take into account the fact that sometimes a swerve is actually the easier option. There are times when intervening balls coming off a cushion will impede the escape. Each shot should be judged on its merits. There is no mention in the rules that a swerve shot is an automatic miss. A rule of thumb will work in most occasions, but let's look at a time where it may not apply. Talking about a one cushion escape, this happened in a state championship final. One red left on the table, the white behind the black, the red between two balls on the board cushion. There was slightly more than a ball's width between the green and yellow, so in theory, a one cushion escape was available. The first attempt went the far side of the green. It was never going to hit the red, so a foul and a miss was caught. The next attempt caught the yellow half ball. Were it not for the yellow, it would have hit the red. It might have been a different call in a professional match, but being the WA State Snooker Championship, I judged it to be an endeavour to the best of the player's ability, and no miss was called. It's also important to consider the difficulty of the snooker. If the natural angle is impeded by a ball or the middle pockets, then side will be needed to make the contact. You need to judge, given the level of competition being played, how the complicating factor of side applies. It can work the other way when there are times that a player tries an option that can never be viable. In this example, hitting past the middle pocket will never make contact. So the only option is to hit before the pocket with left hand side. If the player takes an impossible route, it must be called a miss. Referees will consider after the first failed attempt is made, whether an appropriate correction is applied. If the player persists in a manner that has no chance of success, a miss will continue to be called. Should we consider if an easy position is left? This is not part of the rules. There is no consideration given to where the balls lie, only whether the attempt was to the best of the player's ability. In a match with a referee, it is not up to the referee to decide whether the player should have the balls replaced. There might be an easy red available, but no colour on after that. It is up to the opposing player to decide if he wants to play from the position left, or to send his opponent in, or have the balls replaced. Is there a limit on how many misses can be called? According to the rules, no, up to the point where snookers are required. If you're in a match and there is no official referee, the non-striker becomes the referee. So you can obviously see the conflict of interest here. The person who decides whether a miss is called is also the person who gains the benefit of the miss. This is where sportsmanship plays a very important part in our game. Instead of thinking, well, somebody else did this to me, so it's my turn to do it to them. Think instead, if I had played that shot, would it be fair for me to be put back again and again? If we all just have some empathy and a realistic appraisal of the level of competition we are playing, there will be far fewer issues to deal with. You get some players who will say that if there is no official referee, that the foul and a miss rule should not apply, or that a set limit is applied to the number of times the balls are replaced. This is just setting things up for more arguments. Remember back to the push-out example at the start? 
How will you deal with it when there is no attempt made? To summarise the main points, it's important to judge the level of ability based on the tournament being played. All players should be judged at the same level for that event. A state ranking event is not the World Championship, so they should not be judged at the same level. Give consideration to the difficulty of the snooker, which requires an understanding of the game on your part. Is it a simple one cushion escape? Or are there complicating factors like pockets or balls obstructing a natural angle? Most importantly, if you're in a match without an official referee, give some thought as to whether a miss should really be called. If we all just take a common sense approach, then there will be far less disagreement about the rule.